Hello, I'm Natasha from Natasha Smart Textiles. I'm a wet felter, I make wet felted items and I also run wet felting workshops uh, and tutorials. Now the plan today is to create a piece of wet felt um, but with a slight twist we're going to add in lots of different yarns and fibres to create a bit more texture and pattern with, within our felt. So we're aiming to make a small A4 size sample piece, a bit like this. Um, the idea is that we're not focusing too much on an end result or um, needing a particular size. We're just making a small piece that you can then use for your own projects later. Um, and I've got a few examples here of, of different things that you might want to make. Um, and also, this is just to give you the skills that you can use to then scale up your, your size to make a bigger piece uh, if you want to for something bigger or keep it just small for, for, for a small project like one of these little hearts. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Now, I'm not sure whether you're a beginner or you're very experienced at felting, but I just wanted to give a quick run through um, of, of what the process is before we start. Now, the, the thing that we're using, the magic ingredient I wanted to introduce you to is this uh, wool fleece. This is merino wool fleece. Um, comes in a whole range of beautiful colours. It's lovely to work with. Great fibre to get started with uh, in wet felting. So that's what we're going to be using. Now you might be wondering how do we turn this very very delicate fibrous um, you know mass of fibres here into something that's actually absolutely solid um, can't be torn apart a uh, piece of, of fabric. Uh, so that's the art of, of wet felting. Um, it's all to do with the um, fibres which uh, the wool fibres which all have little barbs on them and basically by applying moisture, friction and soap um, which essentially means getting it wet and soapy and rubbing the, the fleece uh, that starts to activate all the little barbs on all the, the little fibres um, makes them active, makes them want to bond together and the more we work the felt the tighter and tighter that bond becomes until essentially what you've got at the end is a massive, mass tangle of fibres which can't be pulled apart. So it's quite an incredible process. I think that's why I love it so much of uh, the magic of what you can do with wool fleece um, through the felting process. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there's a number of stages which I'm going to show you from laying out the fibres initially um, to finishing the whole thing off to create your, your final piece. Um, it's worth saying that wet felting isn't an exact science. There are lots of different ways of doing it. Um, it's good to learn with lots of different people I have. Um, so um, hopefully I can, I can teach you something a bit different today. Um, and then the only other thing to think about before we start is about shrinkage. Those fibres all starting to, to uh, bond together to create that big big mass um, means that when you start out with something this big uh, the tightening of those fibres grabbing each other means that you'll end up with something this big so you're looking at a good you know 25 to 35 percent shrinkage kind of depending on what fibres you're using so if you do want a specific size of things uh, you know of item at the end you need to make sure that you um, scale up accordingly before you start so that's the only other thing to think about with felting is the shrinkage um, and these are all things that hopefully we can cover in, in future tutorials. So but to start with this is what we're going to make today so um, let's get started. First of all we'll look at our tools and materials so we need a flat surface to work on. Um, our working surface uh, is actually going to be bubble wrap. We're going to use a bubble wrap sandwich um, to create our felt within. So we actually need a piece of bubble wrap which is double the size of our um, actual working area. So I've got a piece here that's 80 centimetres by 40 centimetres and folded that gives me a working surface of 40 by 40. Um, I've also put a A4 piece of paper as my um, basic rough guide template which I've put underneath the bubble wrap so I can still see the edges of it through um, and that's just going to help guide me as to what size uh, we're aiming for. So as long as your bubble wrap is 
um, you know, big enough to accommodate when folded your piece of felt, then that's great. We also need water, warm water, and we need soap. So I'm combining those in a spray bottle, which has got a big dollop of washing up liquid in it and warm water. Uh, that's all we need. Uh, a rubbing tool is also helpful. So something like a kitchen cloth, J cloth, just to help with the rubbing part. There are tools that you can buy, special tools for rubbing, uh, like this, this wooden um, uh, rubbing tool. But you don't need to, to, uh, to buy something like that just yet. Just your hands, to be honest, is good enough at the start. As well as rubbing, we also need to do rolling. So something like a rolling pin or pool noodle. Um, I've actually got here a um, child's toy. It's a like a water pistol, so but foam covered and a really handy sort of size. So I had to repurpose that for felting once I saw that. Um, you'll also want some tea towels because uh, we are obviously playing about with water. Obviously a pair of scissors is always handy too. Uh, so that's our basic tools. Now in terms of materials, obviously we need the uh, wool fleece to start with. Here we've got um, merino wool tops or roving. I've got about 20 grams in total in two main colours um, because that's the design I'm going to do today. So that's our, our main fibre. I've also got another smaller piece of merino just as uh, a bit of an extra colour contrast. So that's our wool fleece. In terms of different fibres, I've got some lovely neon pink bamboo fibre. I've also got mulberry silk. Using fibres like this is rather nice uh, because they've got this sheen to them. Felt um, and wool fleece is, is very matte, so actually when you combine things that have got a bit of a sheen, I always think that's rather nice. We're also going to use wool yarns. I uh, use yarns quite a lot in my felting. I really like the sort of organic lines that you can create. And as long as the yarns are at least 80% wool, then they will felt really easily to your fibres. The wool fleece can felt, this wool yarn can felt, just as if you knitted it and um, put it in your washing, you know, knitted it into a jumper, put it in your washing machine and put it on a boil wash, that would felt. So um, they both have the capability to, to felt. So your yarns actually will felt quite easily into your uh, wool fleece fibre, uh, as long as they are high content wool. I use a lot of mohair, um, because it's very fibrous, so again, it's just making the job of fibre to fibre bonding all that much easier. So I've got a range of different types of wool yarn there as well. Okay, so I'm going to put those to the side for a minute, because the first thing we're going to do is focus on our actual fleece and what we call laying out fibres. Now with... Um, merino wool it comes in these lovely uh, sort of long lengths or called tops or roving and this means that it's been carded and combed into long uh, lengths of fiber so it's been quite heavily processed and cleaned and dyed and it's probably the, the softest, silkiest, nicest fibre to use and probably the most common one. It comes in a massive range of colours. So merino wool is a really good fibre to get you started with felting. Um, now to make it a bit easier to work with, I'm actually going to split it down this length. So I've got 10 grams here, I'm going to split it down the length and fluff out the fibres at the end. Now doing this makes it much easier when it comes to laying out the actual fibres uh, on our surface. Now I need to just fold my bubble wrap back so that I'm just working on one half of it so I can then sandwich it out later. So fluff out our fibres and then what we're going to do is lay out our fibres um, 
using the template as a bit of a guide, because I'm aiming for a four-ish size at the end, I'm going to go over the edges all the way around, at least an inch, three, four centimetres um, bigger than the template, so that when we start accounting for shrinkage later, it's going to get down to about the size of A4, which uh, is what we're aiming for. So we need to lay out even layers of the fleece fibres. And we do this in sort of uh, small shingle type wispy overlaps of fleece fibre. So pulling small pieces just from one end of the fluffed out fleece tube and then laying them down. And you'll see that I'm not being very heavy handed and tough with this. I'm not trying to tug off um, you know, chunks of, uh, of fibre. Actually, by using quite a weak grip in a way, which is my thumb and my fingers together, by pulling off there, I can actually pull off quite nice, wispy, fine um, pieces of, of fleece. Um, and I'm going to overlap them as I lay each one down. And the idea is that by this slight overlapping, we're making sure it's all, all about helping all these fibres bond together. Now, because I'm going to use two colours, I'm only going to do, I'm going to do half the blue that side and the pink down, down below. So I'm just going to lay out the blue first. And these overlapping shingles and you'll get into quite a rhythm once you get the, the hang of it. The important thing though is evenness. What you're really trying to do is um, make all these, these shingle pieces all nice and even um, so that uh, we have a nice even piece of, of felt. And that, unless you deliberately want otherwise, is what you're aiming for with, with flat felt. Um, you can have any thickness you like really, but the thing you're aiming for is evenness. Okay. So that's that's the blue laid out. Um, let's go with the with the pink. So same thing. I'm going to split it down the whole length, just to make it easier to handle. Spread out the fibres at the end, and then again, just take off fine wisps and lay them down, going over the template. And again, remember to go right over those edges and also slightly overlapping the blue that we already did as well. Now what you want to do is ensure evenness. So um, particularly with this first layer that we're doing, often you'll be able to see, I can see there where the template, I can see more clearly from underneath. So it looks to me like I've got the odd slightly thinner bit there. Um, so it's worth just slightly going over any thin bits that you've got. Um, but the plan is that because we're going to do three fine layers of fleece alternating directions, um, that will actually, by the end of having laid out three layers of, of fibres, that will um, have covered up any any thin spots. But now let me just get another bit of blue and pop that on there. Okay, and it's always good to be um, patting and having a bit of a feel of the fleece. I'm just going to pop another couple of bits there where it looked a bit thinner. Okay, um, so yeah, your hands are as good a tool as any really in felting because you'll be able to actually feel if your eyes can't pick it up, you know, for, for slightly thin bits. Um, but as I say, because we're going to do three layers, that's where we'll be able to um, actually ensure by the end that we have got, you know, filled in all of the kind of thin bits because um, each layer will obviously add more. Now, to help with the bonding of the fibres, we're also going to go 
in two different directions. So we've laid out left to right our fibres so far. They're all going in that direction. So this time we're going to lay them out top to bottom, so perpendicular. And the idea is, again, that when these fibres then start to bond, we're creating a stronger bond by doing, having them going in different directions. So, and you can play about with colours. You don't have to do all one colour in one area. You could completely mix it up if you wanted to. Um, I'm deliberately keeping two separate um, clear colours here. So when I start my second layer, in exactly the same way, I'm going in the other direction, top to bottom, and this time I'm going to stop there. Now you can see the blue slightly overlaps the um, pink colour, but obviously when I come to do that bit, I'll just cover that up. So I'm going to carry on and finish off this second layer. Then I'm going to go back and do a third layer, going back in the original direction, which is left to right. So I'll speed this bit up uh, and then move on to that point. So that's all of our fleece background main colours laid out. This third layer um, is, is actually sort of your, your more design layer. So if you did want to um, play about, add a picture at this point, um, then it would be that third layer that you would you would use for that. I've just kept all three layers um, in the same colours that I've been doing. Um, and what I'm going to do now is start adding a bit of uh, design on top. So I'm going to have a sort of wavy stripe going along the middle of different um, yarns and fibres um, to create a bit of a bit of pattern and texture. I'm going to start off using just a little bit. I'm going to take off a very thin sort of strip of my other colour of the uh, merino, and I'm really just going to fluff out the fibres. Now that we're our um, base three layers is done. I can't see the work surface through it, so I know it's thick enough. That's always a good good rule. Um, so you can now add, add elements in any kind of thickness you want, really. We've already got the, the um, thickness of the end material that we want. So now we can just add on decorative pieces. It's not actually going to affect the structure of the felt. So I'm just going to pop some blue across. Actually, perhaps I'll do another one of those. And you can find merino wool in particular in pretty much every colour you could possibly want. So think of this very much as your artist palette. Um, you could uh, collect up colours um, and then create pictures and, and designs um, almost as you would if you were painting a picture. Okay, so I've just added on a little bit of the blue as a bit of a uh, the darker blue as a contrast there. So now I'm going to add on some of these other yarns and, and fibres and see what happens with those. Uh, so let's start with a bit of yarn. So I've got very hairy mohair in similar colours to my background fleece actually, um, but I'm obviously going to use them all over. Um, but it sort of creates a bit of a, a complementary um, design. So, and I'm just going to add pieces of, of yarn going across and um, just snip off the ends. So I'm going to repeat that for um, all of my yarns here, probably adding two or three sort of li wavy lines of yarn going across. So I shall get on with that and speed that up for you um, and then we'll come back and have a look at the other fibres that we've got. So that's all my yarns added on. So I've got about um, probably sort of 12-ish, 15 lengths of yarn going across, just snipped at each end. We're just going to leave those loose. So let's add um, a bit of the other fibre. So we've got this mulberry silk here. 
Now less is definitely more with, with this sort of thing. You don't need very much to create a nice effect. It doesn't really matter how you put it on, just do whatever you fancy. I'm going to take a, I've taken a strip, I'm just gonna fluff, fluff it out. You're giving the fleece an easier time of felting if you avoid sort of hard lumps of, of things. It's better to have fluffed out finer elements uh, because they will felt more easily because the, the fleece fibres won't have such a hard job of getting through um, to felt onto them. Obviously things like the um, bamboo silk and the mulberry silk fibres, they can't felt on their own. They get felted too by the, the wool fleece. So it's that the combination that you need. So the fleece fibres have to be able to get through all of this um, to, to grab it and felt onto it. So I'm going to just put a sort of strip of that on. And you might think, oh, well that's sort of covering up all the yarns and everything, but actually you find that once things are flattened and felted and all moved around and shifted, because that's what happens during the, the felting process, certainly with wet felting anyway, um, things move and it's uh, that kind of organic unexpected with all of it that actually I think gives a really nice result. Which I'm going to split that down a little bit. So there's a little bit too much there. Right, let's take off a little piece of the bamboo fibre. Much the same way, you don't need very much. I'm going to fluff out those fibres. Take another little piece. So this is your opportunity to, to play around and I would certainly encourage you to use whatever you might already happen to have. Um, I imagine that most people dabble in quite a few crafts so I bet if you're a felter you've already knitted or crocheted and you've probably got a stash of wool yarns already so use what you've got and um, don't necessarily go out buying something new, see what you can do with what you've already got to start with. Um, same with some of these these fibres, they're used in other, in other crafts, so paper crafts and other things. So you might have stuff, have things already that you can uh, can have a little a play and a practice with. And you know, same with the the, the tools of felting too. Um, there's nothing there that's too complicated or has to actually be bought. The thing that you really need, obviously, is the wool fleece. Um, but aside from that, uh, you've got a bit of um, you know, repurposing and from around the house uh, to, to start with before you need to go buying anything. Okay, so I've got various fibres on the top there. Now the one thing I am just going to do um, to make, again, the job of the fleece a little bit easier, I'm going to add a little bit more of the merino fleece fibre on top because when these fibres start to move around and the fibres are uh, uh, trying to bond with everything around them, they're going to be trying to penetrate to get to all of these um, silk and bamboo fibres. And actually, if we put a little bit more of the merino fibre on top, the merino fibres that are below will bond to what's on top, and that actually helps to keep everything in place and lock it all in. So I'm just going to add, and it's decorative as well, a little bit more very fine fluffed out bit of the fibre on top. It doesn't have to be much, but it's just, it will help um, our main background fibre to grab hold of everything that's on top of it. Uh, and make sure it's fully bonded, which is obviously what we want.
Okay, so that's our design element finished. Lots of wiggly waviness. Um, be interesting to see what that looks like, obviously, once it's actually been felted and finished. Um, the only extra thing I might do is just add another little bit of one of these yarns on top because they, I know, will felt really well. So because I want that bit to stand out, um, I'm just going to add some more on top. interesting to see how different those bits of yarn that are right on top will look against the bits that are underneath and a bit more hidden. Right, okay, I think I'm happy with that. So let's move on to the um, wetting down and rubbing stage. So this is where we um, start to get the fibres to initially start binding together. And we do this by adding hot soapy water and friction to start the little barbs on all of the, the hair fibres um, from opening up and then they'll all start to grab each other the more that we, we rub and apply um, friction and, and the soapy water. But we've got to start off really delicately because obviously this is all incredibly delicate at the moment. It's not going to take any rough handling. So to minimise distortion, that's why we're going to um, start this rubbing stage actually through our bubble wrap. Um, the first thing we've got to do though it actually is is get our, what's our wet um, soapy mixture into this this fleece because otherwise um, it, it won't felt at all it's the soapy water that is actually going to start this process of uh, activating these fibers so first thing we're going to do is uh, spray our fleece all over um, to get it completely soaked and I like to do this from above so that there's minimum disruption to all of the fleece. You can imagine if I was spraying from the side, it actually will start to move pieces of fleece and fibre around, which we don't want. So I'm spraying directly from above. Um, so that's why you'll see felters using um, spray bottles or little sprayers. Um, rather than say just a jug of water you know pouring that over and um, you're not getting any control at all from that whereas this you can see actually as i'm spraying i'm not really disrupting anything too much now the other thing that you can see is it's all becoming quite sudsy um, and that's that shows that there's there's soap in there and that's good we need the soap to get um, a sort of smooth consistency to actually help with uh, the fibres activating. So I'm just soaking all of this. You don't want water pooling all over the place and running off the table. Um, you don't need that. You just need your fleece to be totally soaked through. If in doubt, use too much soapy water rather than too little because if everything is too dry, then that's not going to help. Okay, so I've given that a good soak all over. And then what I'm going to do is sandwich my fleece parcel in there and then just gently start to rub. And by covering over the, the fleece with the bubble wrap, it means there's just less chance of me distorting all of the fibres and the design that we've got on here. So to start with, I'm just going to rub with my hands. And I can tell that there's just about enough water in there because I'm squeezing water out at the sides here. Now the rubbing stage for something this size, we're probably talking about 20 minutes in total uh, of rubbing. First of all, we're going to rub for about 10 minutes 
with the fleece covered up as it is now um, and then we'll uncover it uh, and rub it um, just with our hands um, straight onto the onto the felt. Now the thing is we have to be very very delicate with it at the start um, and not rub too hard but this idea of us needing to introduce rubbing, friction, agitation we're going to increase all of that as the stages go on but obviously um, we can't do, we can't be too rough with the felt too soon because otherwise there's then a danger of, of things, the fibres not, not bonding together properly. So that's why we're starting gently and rubbing like this is, is gentle. I'm being quite firm with my hands, but it's still quite gentle. And you'll also see that I'm rubbing or trying to rub in exactly the same direction as my design. And all of that is to encourage the fibres um, to bond together. Once they start to bond, you actually want to sort of encourage them to keep going in the same direction. If we start going in an alternate direction, you can just imagine that if you've got two fibres next to each other and they've started to bond, it would be quite easy to um, completely break that bond if you then were to sort of rub off in another direction and those two uh, fibres then sort of end up splitting off. So. Um, it's quite helpful, I find, to rub in the main main um, direction of your design. That minimises disruption to it, especially at the beginning. But of course, if you've got an all-over pattern, then, you know, it's fine. You can go in different directions. Now, let's just try rubbing with our J cloth. So I'm just soaking this and then giving that a rub. And that just helps. It kind of gives a bigger surface area to your hand. So, that's one method of rubbing using a cloth. Let's also try this um, this tool, a rubbing tool, which is a beautiful wooden object. Um, the same thing. Again, it's just giving you a bigger surface area than your hand. Okay, now that was a sort of a couple of minutes of rubbing. Let's have a little look. We always want to keep checking uh, how the felt's getting on as we go along. Um, if you need to make any adjustments, doing it early during the process, like now, is the time to do it. So if there was a bit of face that I didn't quite like in, in a particular position, move it around now. Once fibres become fully bonded later on, you won't be able to move things. So now is really your opportunity. But of course, where things are already starting to bond, you don't want to break those bonds really. Um, you know, we want to sort of encourage that. So try to interfere with it as little as possible. I tend to let the, uh, the this sort of new felt uh, almost just do kind of what it wants. And because for this particular project, we, we're just making a piece that we might use, um, you know, cut up later in another project. Actually, perfection isn't, isn't completely necessary with, with this. We, we can just let it be free and do what it wants. Um, okay, so already I can feel that things are starting to bond together. Again, this is why it's useful just using your hands in wet felting rather than using gloves um, so that you can feel the different stages, feel when the felt is starting to become thicker under your, your fingers and then it just all helps with your understanding of whether you can move on, whether it's ready to move on to, to a different stage. Now I should say a word about soap here. Um, different felters use different things. Some people swear by olive oil or, or olive soap. Um, some people have other mysterious concoct, soapy concoctions that they've, they've found and swear by. I um, like to use uh, sort of old fashioned granny soap flakes. Um, you can't actually get them anymore, although I think you can in a sort of liquid form. But it stands to reason that uh, soap that's designed for wool would be, you know, gentle, sensitive wash type stuff would, would be quite good for, 
felting. So you might want to explore that. But I have to say, washing up liquid is absolutely fine. You don't need to go and buy some olive soap. You don't need anything special. This is washing up liquid and it will work just as well. Um, but you'll just find that felters have preferences, things they like, like um, better than others. So practice um, and see what you like. But again, repurposing things from around the house. Let's just use washing up liquid to start with. Okay, so that's our growing piece of uh, uh, fleece. Now, um, to speed up the process for this video, I'm going to do some rubbing, probably for um, 10 or 15 minutes in total. First of all, mainly on this front side. Then I'll turn it over and do exactly the same on the reverse because in actual fact, what you do to one side of the uh, of the felt will also any rubbing will also you know happen on the on the underside as well so it's worth turning things over and um, that's just reminded me that I didn't actually take out my template from underneath which has now got wet so I'll remove that um so I'm going to give it a rub on both sides and I'll I'll speed that bit up for now Okay, so I've probably rubbed for at least, I did probably five minutes to the front side, five minutes to the reverse side, five minutes back on the front again, all through the bubble wrap, so to protect our, our design. Now, when do you move on to, um, to the next stage of agitation? Well, one way of, of testing to see um, whether your fibres are, are bonding effectively and so that if you then move on to a higher level of agitation, uh, the fibres aren't all going to oh, um, sort of fall off and, um, and be broken. Um, but a good test is to just run your finger across the surface. Ideally, where you've got yarns, um, if you go in the opposite direction, which is what I've been saying not to do because you don't want to break the fibres, but just gently, if you roll across, you'll be able to see where the elements are moving. Now I can see on this piece of bamboo fibre here that here it's not moving, whereas there I can see that line moving. So that obviously needs um, a little bit more attention and a little bit of rubbing. And sometimes actually just a focused bit of rubbing, just like I'm doing right now, in exactly the same direction, very repetitively, is all you need um, to get a, a part that isn't, isn't, or doesn't seem to be sort of sticking down to get it to work. So I've given that a little rub for, oh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. And now when I rub my finger over it, it's not moving, or certainly not, not nearly as much. So um, if you've got any elements that are being really difficult, give it a very, very focused bit of repetitive, repetitive rubbing in the direction that in this case, this piece of yarn or this piece of, of fibre is laid. Uh, and you'll find that that will work wonders. So things are feeling a little bit thicker and a bit hardier. Um, so now I'm just gonna give it five minutes of rubbing with my hand directly on the fleece. So that's giving it an increased level of agitation already by my, me using my hands. Now we all should, so should um, say something about the edges of this piece of felt. Again, because this is, uh, we're just making a sample piece, which we might use for to cut up for another project. I'm not worrying at all about these edges. I'm just leaving them as their wispy edges. Um, if we were making something to shape, let's just say that this was going to be uh, a mat that we were making and we particularly wanted it to be rectangle with straight edges then right from the beginning we would have paid a lot of attention to getting those edges nice and straight and even but for what we're making just a sample we're going to cut it up later um, I'm actually not even going to spend any time worrying too much about uh, the edges or keeping them neat so we're just going to let the edges do what they want in that very sort of organic way
Okay, I'm going to keep rubbing this for a few more minutes, so I'll speed this bit up. Now I've been rubbing that directly on the um, felt. You can see actually quite a lather is developing now. Now if things are getting a bit too soapy, um, I mean it is better having too much soap than too little, but sometimes it all becomes just a little bit sodden and you can barely even see what you're doing. So, get yourself a tea towel. Just place it on top, or if you need to mop up any of the soap at the sides, uh, and that will just pick up enough uh, of the soapy sudsiness. Uh, and you can just carry on. I haven't taken all the soap away, you can see it's still there, but that just um, is making it a bit easier to, to work with. Okay, now I think I'm at the point where we can move on to increasing the agitation. I, there's no movement across the surface, or very, very little when I check it. So I'm happy with that, that our fibres are starting to be bonded to, um, to the fleece. And let's pick it up. Now actually, already, this is you know, turning into a substantial piece of fabric that's holding toge together. Now I could rip this apart, I know, still at this point, because where we're at now is fibres starting to bond together, but what we need to move on to is fibres absolutely locked together and gripping each other. So we're not there yet, we haven't had uh, any shrinkage yet, and that only really happens once you've been working the fibres for a while. So. We need to increase our level of agitation now from the rubbing stage and move on into the rolling stage, um, which is sort of upping that, that agitation uh, to make the fibres uh, very active and start bonding together tighter and tighter. That's really what we're after. Okay, so I'm gonna sandwich our felt back up within the bubble wrap because we want to protect it. We also want to make sure that the pieces of, or well, parts of felt can't, aren't touching each other because if they are, there's a danger that they might start to felt together, which isn't what we want. So we're gonna keep um, our felt protected on both sides by the bubble wrap. So I'm gonna get my rolling tool and roll up within the fleece, within its uh, bubble wrap sandwich, tightly around your roller. Then get tea towel and wrap the whole thing up tightly in that. Okay. And we're going to do a hundred rolls. Now a roll is sort of out and back when, with your hands, so we can we can do this pretty quickly. Um, so that was ten. Um, so we're going to do a hundred. Then we're going to unwrap it, see how we're getting on, uh, and then I'll let you know what else we're doing. So I'll quickly do the other ninety, uh, and then then show you what, what's up, what we're up to next. So that's a hundred quick rolls. I'm keeping quite firm pressure on it. Um, once we've done, I'm gonna unwrap the package from the tea towel and then unwrap our bubble wrap sandwich from the roller. And let's have a look and see, see how things are looking. Sometimes with rolling, things the felt can get a bit folded up on itself or squished. Um, that actually looks fine, but now's the time to straighten it up. So it's worth each time you, you do rolling, um, unwrap the package each time. Now what we're going to do, um, a sort of common recipe for rolling with felt, wet felting is to um, roll 100 rolls on each of the sort of compass points of a rectangular or square piece like this. So we've done 100 rolls going in that direction, 
we're then going to turn it 90 degrees do 100 in that direction and so the same till we've done all four of our sides um, and the, the reason that we do that is again for evenness um, because if we um, roll it evenly and equally on each of the sides then we'll be potentially shrinking it evenly on each of those sides. I'm going to wrap up the package again, turn it 90 degrees, roll it up again, do exactly the same um, until all four sides have done. So that's 100 rolls on all four sides. I know I'm back to the beginning again because I'm back to the bubble wrap being in the same position of the, uh, the sandwich part being in front of me there. So that's had 400 rolls and again I can see it's already feeling yet firmer. Um, still not much shrinkage yet though, so uh, the fibres still need, need more work. What we're going to do now is turn the felt over and do exactly the same on the reverse side. So another 400 rolls on each of the compass point edges. So I'll go away and do that. Okay, so I've just done, finished my last of the 400 rolls on each of the edges of the reverse side. And let's have a look again. Still not shrunk very much yet. I can feel the whole thing is much, much firmer. I can tug on that now. And I'd have quite a job pulling that apart. So that means that all of the fibres are fully bonded. Nothing is moving on the surface, which is great. But what we now need to get going is these fibres really, really locking together, going from bonded to really tightly locked. Um, so the next stage is going to be increasing the agitation even more and shocking the felt by throwing it on the table. This is quite a satisfying element of felting, which people always really enjoy. Um, and by throwing your felt down hard on the table, uh, that really does activate those fibres, really shocks them into grabbing each other tighter and tighter, which is exactly what we want. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to get rid of my bubble wrap now, so we don't need that. So for throwing, um, you don't need to fold it up or do anything like that. It's better actually to leave it quite loose. So I'm just going to loosely pick it up and throw it on the table. And that really is it. What I would suggest though is we're probably going to end up doing about 250 throws. Um, so I tend to do them in blocks of 50 because felting uh, where, the, where the real shrink, shrinkage is going to happen, it happens really quickly. So just in case things start going in a direction that, we, uh, that we're not sure about or we might want to particularly um, try and stretch the felt or shape it in a particular direction so we want to be able to control uh, what's happening so um, if we just threw these 250 throws on the table all in one go we really wouldn't have much of an idea of uh, what was happening to the felt so it makes sense to after every 50 throws just have a look straighten it out again check there are no odd bits and um, you know that's our time when we can make adjustments of course, because I've been talking, I've no idea how many throws that is, but let's just say that that's about 50. So let's open it up and have a little look. So it's still quite a stretchy, um, floppy fabric at the moment. So I can tell that it still needs um, more throwing. What we're eventually looking for is what I call a sort of crocodile skin effect, a bumpy, ruched effect on the surface. And 
I can see bits of that developing, um, but it needs to be more consistent. So I know we've got a bit of a bit of time still to go here. So that was 50. Um, I'm now going to do another 200. Um, I'll do it in blocks of 50 uh, and then I'll come back and show you. But yeah, let's just picture that size and image to start with after 50 throws and let's see where we are after another 200. I actually did an extra 50 throws. This is after 300 throws uh, on the table. Uh, I hope you can see the shrinkage that has taken place there. We are kind of back to our A4-ish sort of, sort of size. Now, we could carry on felting this, but actually it feels much thicker and more substantial now. Um, I hope you can see there's a, there's a bumpy crimpiness going on with the surface there, which shows that it's um, been, been well felted and felted enough. We could felt it some more, um, but in actual fact, I want to use this, I think, for a sewing project. So I still want to keep it quite, quite supple um, and still, still a bit flexible. Um, it's certainly holding together now. You know, you're really not going to pull that apart. There's still a little bit of stretch to it, but not very much. If it was very, very stretchy, I'd carry, carry on. Um, but I think we've actually got quite a firm fabric there now. Um, so I think we can stop. So that was probably about 10 minutes of, of throwing. So the final stage is to rinse it out. Um, now often actually I do the throwing stage actually in, in a sink um, because that then contains the mess and then I can go straight on to washing it out. Just to show you, I've got um, a bowl of water here. So just warm water. Um, the best way actually is to fill the sink with, with a couple of inches of water and then just soak your piece in it. And usually I would run the water probably twice, so I'd get rid of all that soapy water, then fill the sink uh, again uh, and let it soak again. So once the water's running clear, give your piece a squeeze. Try and avoid wringing it because Obviously it's a stretchy material and actually wringing it um, can sort of stretch it weirdly, uh, you know, somewhere that you don't, don't want that to happen. So I always find that just squeezing it's better. These actually have still got a bit of soap in, but um, I won't worry about that for showing you, I think. Um, so once it's the water's run clean, you've given it a good squeeze. We still want to get a bit more water out. So this is where another tea towel comes in handy. I'm just gonna wipe the surface, my work surface, to get rid of any soap. And then if we just flatten out our piece, sandwich it in a tea towel, and then roll that up. And then give it a bit of a roll you'll find that lots of the water um, will be transferred to the tea towel and will come out. You can see there's quite a lot of water on there. So that's it dried out um, in a tea towel. So what I would do next is just give it any kind of final shaping that we want to do, straightening it out and then leave it to air dry either over a radiator or in an airing cupboard. And once it's dry, then give it a good steam iron. Just be careful um, about ironing on the front. If you've got any kind of um, man-made sparkly fiber as I have in this particular, one of the yarns that I use, um, it's got this sort of Angelina-like fiber. So a sparkly plasticky fiber in there. So. Obviously, if you iron that on the front, there's a danger that that will melt. So um, generally, I iron my steam iron on my felt on the reverse. Um, and then you don't have to worry about that. It just gives it an extra sort of polish to the finished surface, smooths everything down. Here's an, 
my other sample that I had, uh, which has already been ironed. And I think you can just see, you don't lose the, uh, the crocodile skin, bumpy, crimpy look to it, uh, which is what you need, um, which kind of kind of shows it's been well felted. Um, but it just smooths, smooths out the fibres quite nicely and then makes it a nice fabric uh, to work with for whatever you're going to do next with it. So there we go. So there's our finished piece of decorated, uh, embellished flat felt. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found it useful. Um, do give me a thumbs up on the video below if you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or thoughts um, about what you might like to see in future videos or something you'd like me to explain in a bit more detail, um, then please do get in touch, comment below. I'm hoping this video will be the first of many. Um, so thanks again and happy felting in the meantime. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.